Well, the reason behind this good number, uh, which we registered, uh, is twofold. Number one, we've managed to keep trade open during this crisis, uh, which to be frank was not really the expectations we all had two years ago when it all started. Thanks to World Trade Organization disciplines, thanks to the monitoring, the surveillance, which we've done, we've been able to push back these protectionist pressures. Second, African economies still have an engine of growth. They've been relatively less contaminated by the financial crisis. Thanks God, most of African banks were not in credit derivatives or complex systems. So there is more growth coming back and trade is uh, open, uh, which is something which we have to remain very, very vigilant on. It seems as though the approaches to trade vary depending on where you're coming from. People would argue that America could pursue a more export-oriented growth strategy, but they're choosing to focus on the internal dynamics. Germany and China, net exporters, are continuing to try to influence as much as they can um, their export capacity. And Africa, which is the strategy they should follow because they need the consumers of the Western markets, but they also need to develop their competitiveness if they're facing a China or a Germany, for instance, in international trade? Well, you're absolutely correct. I mean, there's no one-size-fits-all macroeconomic policy. U.S. need to save more, export more, consume less. China needs to export relatively less and consume more. Now, Africa is in a different position. Africa is a, a developing continent. I mean, some African economies could be qualified as emerging economies like uh, Tunisia, like Morocco. But you're right, there still is a problem of basic competitiveness. Now, in my view, this problem stems mostly from the fact that Africa's trade has remained what it was in colonial times. North-South trade, Europe, US. What Africa needs to do is more South-South trade, more regional trade, more intra-African trade. And by the way, when you look at the map of trade in Africa, you can see that happening, for instance, in the eastern part of Africa. Very rapidly, the eastern African community has increased its own internal trade a lot. So that's what will foster competitiveness, specialization, and it will make African economies less dependent from shocks which may happen in US, EU or Japan. You touch on an issue that's surfaced a lot here in Tunisia at this uh, conference for African economic uh, recovery. And one of the issues is regional integration and the slowed pace of regional integration. And within it, the um, challenges posed by infrastructure problems in Africa. I mean, your opinion on what's going on in Africa, because some people would say we've come a long way. We've got Comesa, we've got the East African community, we've got SADC. Well, I believe the intentions, the roadmaps are okay. I think all African leaders agree today that fostering regional integration on this continent, which is subcontinental groupings, regional economic groupings, is the way to go. So I don't think there's any problem in what should be done. The question is getting it done, which involves quite a lot of political energy, leadership, business mobilization, overcoming bureaucratic hurdles, customs, procedures, red tape. It's a question of implementation. So my own sense is that the, the, the word of now is action. Planning has been done, action is what needs to be done. 
I mean, staying within the whole realm of what Africa can do to boost its uh, trade competitiveness is also a lot being said about the need for trade finance and governments really supporting the export sectors within their respective economies, but ensuring that financial institutions also come to the party in helping the exporters get out there. We're sitting now in a situation where we talk about currency wars and who's manipulating their currency to boost their trade competitiveness. And where does Africa fit into that continuum? There still is a lack of infrastructures. And what I mean by infrastructures is not just hard infrastructures like ports, railroads, energy grid. It's also soft infrastructures like payment systems in banking, for instance, or harmonization of standards. And these are areas where international organizations an institution like the African Development Bank, the World Trade Organization, the World Bank, we are partnering together to make the necessary finance easier. That's one thing. And there's been, there's been big progress uh, in recent years. And I think you know, the role of the African Development Bank today is uh, not comparable at all to what it was 10 or 20 years ago. Now, short term, we have this issue of let's say, on cooperative uh, monetary development, uh, which is a risk for trade. 